Well, hello and welcome to my channel, Laura's Lupus. And hi, my name is Laura. And I created this channel for lupus survivors in order to bring about awareness to the disease, uh, to educate and to encourage lupus survivors and their family members. And so today's video, we're going to talk about diagnosing lupus. There's all sorts of pieces to the puzzle that's involved in properly diagnosing lupus. And all of that is done uh, under the umbrella of laboratory tests. And so we will be discussing the, some of the laboratory tests, not all of them, um, what the results mean and what the doctors are looking for. So if you have been diagnosed with lupus or in the process of being diagnosed with lupus, you know that it can be a pretty lengthy process. It's not something that happens very quickly. And so what happens is that you will be tested and retested and tested again and probably tested again. And some of these tests will sound very familiar, but this is just to give you a general understanding of uh, the names of the tests, what they mean, and what the doctors are looking for. And so during my research, um, I discovered there was like a light bulb moment for me that lupus is not just after certain organs or tissues of the body or certain functions of the body. Lupus is after the cells of the body. If you take anything away from this video today, remember that lupus is a disease that's after the healthy cells of the human body. Because if it can get inside of a healthy cell, you know, in which every part of our body, every function of our body is made up of a group of cells. And so if it can get inside of those cells, it can produce unhealthy cells. And those unhealthy cells can fight against healthy cells. And then also it can wreak havoc in that part of the body. Um, you know, doctors are always saying, well, lupus is active in this part of the body. Lupus is active in that part of the body. Well, in that part of the body where lupus is active, it's gotten into those cells. It's reproducing itself, unhealthy cells, and it's fighting against the healthy cells. And remember, lupus is a, an autoimmune system disease, which means that, you know, your immune system is fighting against you. And so a lot of people are always saying, well, you know, take this, take that to build up a healthy immune system. But a healthy immune system means that your immune system is going to fight against you more. And so a lot of the medications that they put you on is to suppress your immune system because it's overworking and it's fighting against you. And so lupus is trying to attack the cells of the body. And why is it so important that lupus gets inside of a cell? Well, let's do a quick recap of what a cell is made of. And it's made of several different things, but let's just go over some of the important parts of the cell. And these parts that I'm going to mention are the parts that lupus seek to attach itself to. So here's the cell. We all have cells. The cell includes a cell membrane, which is that thick outer covering that protects that particular cell from uh, foreign foreign material, foreign uh, bodies and everything. And so uh, this membrane, what it does is that it's, I mean, wow, the cell is an awesome thing. If you can ever do a study on the cells, the cell is awesome within itself. It can open up and allow water and, you know, the things that it needs in order to function. It can open up and allow that in. And then also it can get rid of the waste material. So inside of the cell is the nucleus, and the nucleus is the command center of that particular cell. Everything that that cell was created to do for that part of the body or that functioning of the body is included in the nucleus. And so lupus, if it can get in and it, it can attach itself to the nucleus, it can do a lot of damage. It can cause a lot of problems inside of the human body. Also inside of the cell is the DNA. Your DNA uh, is what makes you you. It's your genetics. You get DNA from your mom. You get DNA from your dad. So just think if, if lupus can get inside of that, it can change your DNA. Also, the mitochondria uh, and the ribosome, these are areas in which uh, the unhealthy uh, cells of lupus seek to attach itself to. Okay? So what are the pieces of the puzzle um, that helps a doctor to arrive at an accurate diagnosis of lupus. So we're going to talk about that today. Um, 
the lab test that you will hear a lot about and that you will be tested and retested on again and again um, include blood tests. Um, those blood tests are looking for proteins and it's looking for antibodies, okay? Um, also, the blood tests will include a blood clotting test and we'll discuss that uh, further on in this video, uh, the blood clotting time test. So that's a part of the, the blood test antibodies, proteins, blood clotting. And then the second part of the puzzle is the urine test. The blood in the urine can tell a lot about what's going on inside of a person's body. And so we'll be discussing what the doctors are looking for in the urine test. And last but not least, the final piece of the puzzle, and sometimes you may have a biopsy and sometimes these pieces of the puzzle will give the doctor all the information they need in order to make an accurate diagnosis. But sometimes you may have to have a tissue biopsy, okay? So let's jump right into it. The first blood test that you will hear a lot about is the CBC, and that is a complete blood, blood count, excuse me. And the complete blood count, what they're looking for is the numbers of your red blood cells and your white blood cells. And most of the time, if a person has active lupus, the red blood cells and the white blood cell count are going to be very low, okay? Um, the next test is the antibodies test. And antibodies are made against your own normal cells and tissues, and that's all because of lupus. It forms these antibodies in order to attack healthy cells and healthy tissues in order to duplicate itself and wreak havoc on whatever part of the body that is active in, okay? And so the first antibodies test that you will hear about is an ANA test, which is the anti-nuclear uh, antibodies test. These antibodies connect or bind to the nucleus. Remember how we talked about the nucleus is the command center of the cell. So lupus tries to connect to the nucleus. And a lot of times during testing, the doctors will say, well, yeah, you had a positive ANA, it means that something is going on inside of your body. Uh, you may have some sort of a connective tissue disease. A positive ANA is not a specific um, marker for having lupus. Uh, it can occur. It can mean that you have lupus, but not necessarily. Uh, one minute you may have, one week you may have a positive ANA, the next week it may be negative. So a positive ANA is not a definitive test for lupus. The next test that you will hear about, the next antibodies test, is the double-stranded DNA test. And this is called the anti-DS DNA. These uh, antibodies attack the DNA. Remember, your DNA is your genetics that you get from your mom and your dad. It makes you you. And so they, they seek to attach to your DNA to change that. Um, the next one is the antibodies to histone, and this is a protein that surrounds the DNA molecule. And this is seen with someone who has systemic lupus, but most of the time it's seen with someone who has lupus induced by medication. Remove the medication, the symptoms of lupus disappear. Um, the next one is antibodies to phospholipids, and this one is a very important one because antibodies that are formed to your phospholipids this will cause narrowing of the blood vessels, which lead to blood clots in the legs, the lungs. It can lead to a stroke, a heart attack. And for females, it can cause a female to have numerous miscarriages without any known reason or cause, okay? Also, um, the next important antibodies test is antibodies to RO slash SSA or LA slash SSB. And these are proteins that are found also in the nucleus, okay? And this one is important because for a female, if she's pregnant, lupus can be passed on to her unborn child. These antibodies can cross the placenta and cross over to the unborn child, okay? Um, so let's get into the protein test. The proteins are, um, they can alert the doctor if there's inflammation somewhere in your body, and lupus can cause inflammation. The first test for uh, protein is the complement test, and most of the time this will be low due to active lupus. The next one is the C-reactive protein test. This protein is produced in the liver, and normally it's high, and it may also cause inflammation due to lupus. 
Um, the next one that we're going to talk about is the erythrocyte sedimentation rate, ESR, or you'll hear a lot called set rate. Doctors call it the set rate. This here is usually high in people that have active lupus. It can also be high in a person that's dealing with any type of infection. And because of your immune system is not able to fight off infections, a lot of times when you have lupus, you will have a high set rate because there is some sort of infection going on in your body. So it's very careful to stay away from people that are sick or places where infections are high or people who have some sort of an infection that can be passed on. The last blood test is the blood clotting time test. And this here is very significant because if your blood is clotting too fast, it means that it can lead to, um, you know, the blood clots and deep vein thrombosis in your arteries and in your veins. Um, also, if it's clotting too slow, it means that it can lead to very severe problems due to excessive bleeding. If you have a cut, or if you're going to have surgery, you don't want to be bleeding excessively from that, okay? And so the last but not least, well, no, we're going to get into the urine test. The urine test, um, the doctors are looking for how the kidneys are functioning. Um, like I said, the urine and the blood can tell a lot about what's going on in a person's body. Lupus can attack the kidneys without any type of warning signs. And the doctors are looking for cell casts, which are bits of cells that normally would be removed by your blood, but they're being filtered through your kidneys. Also, they're looking for excessive, urine, um, excessive protein in the urine, which means that your uh, kidneys are not filtering out waste properly out of the body. Most of the time when you have a diagnosis of lupus, you're always going to experience excessive protein in the urine, okay? And last but not least um, will be a tissue biopsy. It's not all the time that you have to have one, but the doctors may deem it necessary if all the pieces of the puzzle are not coming together to give them an, enough information to form an accurate diagnosis of lupus. So wherever they feel that lupus is the most active, they will just take a little piece of tissue, send it off to the lab for testing, okay? So this here is all the pieces of the puzzle that will help them to form an accurate diagnosis. I hope that you found this video informative and helpful. Uh, thank you for joining me today. If you have not subscribed to my channel, please hit the subscribe button. Please like, comment, share. If you have any additional questions about laboratory tests or what they mean, leave it in the comments below. And just remember that there is life after lupus. Thank you so much for joining me. Have a great day, everybody.